Gabriel Ehrlich. He is the Director of Research Seminar in Quantitative Economics from the University of Michigan and an economic forecaster. Good to see you, Gabriel. Um, let me start with what we heard earlier today from President Biden, uh, because the purpose of that is to bring down gas taxes to make it, I guess, more tolerable for Americans that are spending more money. Will that plan work? Well, you know, I wouldn't expect it to have a big effect for consumers. I might help a little bit on the margin, but the reality is right now we're basically at capacity in terms of uh, refineries. And so the, the supply curve is very steep. I would expect some of that savings to go uh, to, to the refiners and producers. And uh, the reality is, you know, it's 18 cents per gallon. Uh, that's not a lot when gas prices are at $5. Yeah, I mean, I, I was reading that as well. And, and quite frankly, the Democrats and Republicans haven't even agreed on it yet. So this is only a proposal at this point. Nothing's been passed. But now, for the record, he is asking states also to cut back on their taxes as well. So we'll see what happens next. Now, on the issue of inflation, you are studying these numbers very carefully. And I personally think the market is way behind the eight ball on this because everything that I've heard is that from suppliers to manufacturers to retailers, all of this is unsustainable and no one's cutting prices. Everybody wants to raise prices. The question is, how long does this go for and how long will it take for the Fed to get it under control? Yeah, you know, inflation has really uh, been a lot higher than we had expected and, and than anybody wants to see. Uh, you know, there have been some, uh, you know, things outside of the Fed's control that have certainly contributed to the inflation this year. Certainly Russia's invasion of Ukraine has added to price pressures, uh, both for food and, and for energy prices. Uh, you know, I, the Fed obviously is, is raising rates pretty fast, uh, pretty quickly uh, in order to start cooling off demand. Uh, and, you know, we're already starting to see some signs of that in the data. I, I do expect inflation to start cooling down as we get into the second half of the year and especially late in the year, uh, but it's going to take time. Uh, certainly, I wouldn't expect it to get back to the Fed's 2% target uh, e even by 2024, probably still a little bit above 2% uh, e even then. Yeah, that, that target doesn't seem as uh, relevant right now. I do want to ask you this because this is what you do day in and day out is, has there been a time where we have raised rates to the extent that we are talking about raising rates, that there has not been a recession. You know, it is going to be a challenge uh, to avoid a recession. And, uh, you know, I think the reality is the Fed is going to try to be data dependent, but, you know, the data lags. Uh, so, you know, how, how far the Fed ends up raising rates, I, I think, remains an open question. You know, uh, markets are expecting rates to get up above 3.5% by the end of the year. Uh, the Fed's track record of producing soft landings, which means, you know, cooling, cooling the economy off and, and getting inflation down without producing a recession, isn't great. Uh, you know, th that, that being said, I, I do think the Fed has a chance to land the plane. Uh, it's certainly the recent news has made it harder. The, the, the precursor typically to good times or bad times is how people feel. Now, I know the University of Michigan has their own index. I'm sure you're looking at a bunch of different numbers as well. The business community, they're not feeling great. We know that from all the surveys that have been done. The consumers, we have seen a significant drop off in consumer confidence as well. Then there's the how do you feel about the future of housing and that number isn't great either. What number do you think is most relevant for sort of the average person that's watching this? What number should we focus on? You, you know, I, I understand why people are in a sour mood about the economy. Nobody likes it when you go to fill your gas tank and you're paying, you know, more than five dollars of uh, per gallon of, of gas, um, you know, because it's really hard to to substitute away to cut back on on that. You know, you've planned your commute. You've, you know, got to drive to your job. It can be tough to, you know, to uh, make up those savings. Um, and, and same with food. You know, we see food prices rising uh, at the same time. You know, I, I do think it's important to keep in mind there are some good good signs about the economy you know the unemployment rate is only 3.6 percent it's basically back down to where it was before covid so you, you know nobody wants to hear the good news right now and i i understand why when inflation is running you know at the fastest rate in 40 years uh, but objectively you know if you do take a step back you know we have had a fast recovery so you know there there is a chance to land the plane if we can get inflation under control if the fed can get some good luck 
you know, I think there are a lot of reasons to, to be pessimistic. We hear it from consumers. We hear it from businesses. But when you look at some of the numbers for how the economy is doing right now, you know, in, in terms of the labor market, it's actually not doing so badly. Gabriel, very quickly, the end of this year, we've got the raising of interest rates, and it takes time for that to have an impact on the economy. What are we looking at come Christmas and December? Yeah, you know, I think that the economy is going to be slowing down. I think you might see the unemployment rate rise a little bit. I don't think we'll be in a recession by the end of the year. I think the wild card is, is certainly Russia's war in Ukraine and what happens to energy prices and food prices. Uh, you know, I still think the base case is that we will avoid a recession, uh, certainly through the end of this year, but the risk is, is growing and high.